Okay. Well, welcome everyone. It is again Thursday night, and we are, you would think, in Bellevue. We're close to Bellevue. We're in Kings and Springs this evening, and we're here to bring you just a really delightful show that I know you're all going to enjoy. You're going to learn from. Uh, we're going to discover a lot of stuff that I've never really dealt with or worked with myself, and so this is going to be a great show. Uh, so this is Live from the View. It's presented to you from Community Arts of Bellevue, which is a 501c3 organization that was created to bring the arts uh, and uplift and uphold and educate the arts and the artists that live in the Bellevue and West Nashville area. So uh, CAB is a completely volunteer run organization. And um, we're very fortunate that we're able to do and bring programming to you because we have incredibly exceptional artists that like we have with us this evening to help us do these shows with. And so I think you'll enjoy this. You can always become, uh, become more involved with us. Uh, we have a website. You can just Google us at Community Arts of Bellevue and look at what's going on, some of our events. Uh, you can become a member of Community Arts of Bellevue. So there's a lot of great stuff and great ways to get involved with us. You can become a volunteer. You can be an artist. We could probably do a show with you sometimes, maybe if you'd like to. So just there's always many, many ways uh, that, we, that we're supporting the arts, whether it be through visual arts, performing arts, dance arts, culinary arts, you name it, we cover it. And so we're uh, this show is called For the Relentlessly Curious. And so we hope tonight during this show, you'll stay relentlessly curious as we talk about this. I'm bringing with us this evening, I'm introducing to us this evening, um, a lady who has been uh, a real anchor in the community and a real incredibly important artist to all of Middle Tennessee, Miss Vicki Vickman. Vicki, we're Hi. honored to have you with us this evening. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Yeah, absolutely. So um, what you're going to hear about tonight is about weaving, but not in any traditional sense that you probably have seen or thought about weaving uh, before. Uh, Vicki brings this whole new artistic endeavor to this uh, with a whole wonderful flair uh, and uh, art, artisanship that is just beyond speech sometimes. It's just so beautiful. I have always admired her work. She's also, uh, you can find her at Shamai Gallery out at the Loveless here in Bellevue. Um, and I've always just admired her work uh, tremendously. But we're going to not only talk about her weaving, there's other stuff that's involved in this tonight, too. So I'm really excited <laughs> about all of that. Um, so, Vicki, as you can see, we're sitting at Vicki's loom at the moment. Vicki, thank you for, sure. for, for uh, bringing us out here tonight. <laughs> I'm really um, glad to have you. The drive out here is gorgeous. So if you, for no other reason, you need to drive out here because it's absolutely stunning and beautiful. And it's, we love it. It's, um, I think a lot of people don't really know that this part of the country exists, but it does. You just yeah, right. <laughs> we'll keep that our secret tonight. So let's talk about your weaving. How did you get into this? Um, well, I've always made stuff. Um, I made pot holders when I was a kid because my father ran a boys club, and I had an endless supply of those little looper things where you could oh, make yeah. the little frame loop. <laughs> so I made a pot holders and used to take them door to door in my neighborhood until everybody in the neighborhood had pot holders, and then I started sewing them together and making bags and placemats. And uh, anyway, that so was what did you do with all these placeholders and placemats? Well, and... I, I literally went and sold them and gave oh, them away yeah. and stuff, um, not knowing that I was weaving. That was just one of the projects and materials that I had available. I had started sewing when I was about eight, making like a dress out of a bed sheet and, you know, very just trying to make stuff, basically. Okay. Okay. And um over the years, I became a seamstress, um, made clothes for other people. I went through my hippie phase and did a lot of hippie embroidery on blue jeans and T-shirts, or not T-shirts, but shirts and stuff. Um, but in college, I tried to figure out what it was I could study that I could stand to study for four years. And I had was enamored of pottery at the time. So I started studying ceramics. I took two years of classes. And then I transferred from a local college in Augusta, Georgia, to the University of Georgia, oh, wow. where I wanted to study under this particular wonderful playmaster. And his classes were full, so I couldn't get in. And they had, as an alternative in the art department, 
fabric design. Okay. And I thought, well, I can take one of those and then next time I'll take clay. But once I took one, I had to take another and another. And I ended up with a, a degree in fabric design from the art department. Learned to weave there, learned to dye yarn there. Um, and at that point in time, you either took that kind of a degree and went into education or industry, which I wasn't really enamored of either i love education but i didn't feel like i was ready to be a teacher right um of weaving or whatever and the art fairs were just beginning and i can remember a, a student coming in one day and saying she did an art fair that weekend and we said what is that <laughs> right. and she said well i went to the park and we put our stuff on a picnic table and people came and bought it and i thought hmm that's pretty cool. <laughs> so that sort of, you know, was an evolution towards that. But it was many years before I actually was weaving full time and doing art fairs, which is what I'm more known for around here. I, I spent about eight years working for Special Olympics in um, recreation therapy. And uh, that was a wonderful part of my life. Um, but when I got the chance to weave full time, I took it. And here I am. Uh, almost 40 years later. <laughs> Four years later. Tom Foss, we're having oh, fun, doesn't it? No kidding. <laughs> Great stuff. Great stuff. I also want to introduce with us this evening is Miss uh, Michelle Lambert. Uh, Michelle's with also Mr. My Gallery. And uh, she's also going to be one of our models this evening because she's got one, one of Vicky's beautiful pieces that is uh, absolutely gorgeous. And uh, so you can see how gorgeous this stuff is, these, these works of art are. Um, so how did you get to, to Nashville? Well, my husband's in music. That helps. Yeah. <laughs> and he decided at one point he didn't want to be playing the bars in Athens, Georgia, when he turned 30 or 40 or whatever the year was then. And so he was going to take it a little more seriously to the next level. And there was New York, LA and Nashville. And Nashville was a much saner it. He knew some people here. It wasn't so big, so far away. Of course, it's bigger now than it was, but he came here and established himself as a guitar player and a songwriter. Okay. And soon after I finished my graduate degree, I came on up here too. Okay. And um, within about a year of my moving here, a little over a year, we moved to Kingston Springs. So that was, and we moved out here to Kingston Springs in 1983, which some of you people It was people just Kingston then. Born. They didn't have springs, just the Kingston. No, there was another Kingston, and our mail used to get messed <laughs> up and go to the East or the East Tennessee Kingston, and I used to have <laughs> to tell people, <laughs> it's Kingston Springs. Yeah. We're different. So um, it probably still happens some. But <laughs> More than you. Now we're the it's springs. It's okay now, right? Yeah, yeah. Let them have it. Cool. That's nice. So you did your so you did your MFA at University of Georgia as well. Yeah, um, but my master's was in education. I took recreation therapy okay. as a master's okay. All right. because I uh, wanted to be broader than just art therapy. Uh, if I had it to do over again, I think I would do art therapy specifically. But I came from a recreation background. My parents ran voice clubs. My grandparents ran voice clubs. So the whole broader. Um, spectrum made sense and it got me into Special Olympics which was a very valuable part of my life for a long time that's so. beautiful very nice good stuff good but stuff. now here I am back to making stuff back to making stuff well, let's talk about your making stuff mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your loom and your setup and how does this all work well let's see I have three looms but this is my workforce it's the middle. I have a, a bigger one and a smaller one. Okay. But this one allows me to do almost everything that I do for my sort of one of a kind production work, which is the wearable scarves, shawls, garments, things like that. Um, so it's a 36 inch loom. It has what they call eight harnesses, which means it has 10 foot pedals, which allows for different patterning. Um, so, you know, we're not trying to do a here's how to weave in five minutes because you can't do that. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's why you went to school and got that's a degree. Why I went to school and got a degree and why I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm going to stand up and get out of the way so okay. you can, so, um, our, uh, so we can get a better shot. Of what's what's on here. my loom today? I, I do two styles of weaving um, on the loom. Uh, one of them is very 
basic blacks and whites and lacy weaves that are very complex in terms of how many foot pedals I have to use, like how much organ. threading I have like to do. Organ, yes. It? And when you look at the graph score patterning, it looks a lot like music. Um, but I can't talk and do those things at the same time. Okay. So what I have on the loan today is what most of my wearable work is, and it's patterned by the dye process. So that's a whole nother life in and of itself where I take yarn. You can look around the, the room and see a lot of multicolor yarns. All of these start in white and I hand so dye. So you them. dye all these yourself? Yeah. I don't hand dye all the yarn that I use, but all of these multicolor pieces that are incorporated into the wearables are hand dyed and then they're mixed with other solid colors in oh, the weaving process. Wow. And uh, a lot of people think of wool when they think of hand wovens. I went in the other direction. I, I use uh, silk, cotton, and bamboo predominantly. I'm starting to use a little bit of hemp, but they're all plant based uh, uh, yarns and they use a different combination of chemical basis of dyes. So I just leave the wools to other people, and I like my cottons and silks. And they're all washable. Um, oh, they really? Absolutely. They're all beautiful. And just so uh, what I'll tend to do is take one of these sections of yarn, like this one, okay. and I'll combine it with some solid yarns, some yeah. solid colors. So what I have on the loom today is this color combination with black. And now I'm just going to weave the fabric uh, with a solid black cross thread okay i can either talk too much yeah, too you, you, you this, so i don't know um, and well, what's happened here is there are 100 to 200 and eight, 288 threads okay and each one of those at and you one have to time, individually run each of those threads through each thread has to go through this cone oh called God. a reed and then it has to go through one of these little wire strips called a heddle and the heddles are on different wooden frames called harnesses which are hooked up to my foot pedals called treadles. Now we're doing a very simple weave because all the pattern is going to come from the, the dye colors. So all I have to do is press the way I have it set up, press one pedal to raise half the threads and then I'm going to press the opposite pedal to raise the opposite threads. And that's what gives you that basic over, under, over, under, over, under that you hear about in weaving. You're interlacing Okay. One set of threads sure, with sure. the other by going over and under. How long does it take you to get set up to start weaving? Set up for certain projects can take longer than the, the sit down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, people say, well, you know, the week they think of the weaving is what I'm doing right here, but all that setup is a part of it. It, it. it takes it takes me a day to set up the loom for this kind of a project. So, but now. Because I've spent all the time dyeing the yarn into a pattern and I've spent all the time setting up the loom the way I want it, I can do the back and forth in a very methodical, uh, rhythmic way. And this is the Zen part. I was going to say, this is so Zen. Man, don't let that sound. Don't you know? It's beautiful. And I do weave barefoot <laughs> so I can feel the petals. In the winter, I wear socks. So what's going on with the pedals while you're doing this? Well, one pedal is raising half the threads. And then I cross my shuttle yarn on the bobbin through that space. I'm going over the bottom threads and under the top. Bring it up. Oops, I went the wrong way. If you go the wrong way, you just unweave. I was going to ask that question. Nobody wants to unweave. <laughs> so I put in one thread. Now I'm going to press the opposite pedal. And what will happen is the threads that go up will now oh, go down. Oh, oh, oh. So instead of having to go over, under, over, under right. this thread, I can go just through that space. And I'm going over the bottom ones and under the top ones. And is this what's called a shuttle car? This is the shuttle. It's called okay. a boat shuttle because it looks like a boat. It does look like a boat. It has a um, bobbin on it, okay. which is what the yarn is wound around. And depending on what you're weaving with, because you can weave with yarn, or like we're gonna look at later, you can weave with strips of fabric, or you can actually weave with strips of paper and other combinations of things. But weaving is that process of interlacing a one set of threads or strips and crossing them 
with perpendicularly with another set okay. of threads and strips and interlacing them mm -hmm. so that they create one solid thing. So thread by thread, I'm actually building this cloth. If you look at these threads, you can stick your fingers through. But in front of me, every time I put the shuttle through the space and bring it out the other side, I'm leaving a thread in there, pulling it into place, and the cloth grows thread by thread. By okay, thread. okay. And I use the words thread and yarn and uh, interchangeably. Sure, sure. So those that on your fabric here, there's a little bit of a <laughs> just the way I'm looking at it, a little bit of a different design here mm -hmm. than here. Is that just the well, way the thread is coming through? What's happened is because of the way I dyed the yarns, okay. the color are changing this way. Okay. Um, this little blue thread in the middle is because what I'm making is going to require me to cut this piece of fabric in the center. And so this is just my guide gotcha. to tell me sure. when I take it off the loom, that's where I'm going to cut. Okay. Because so this to me is just a visual, it's just an illusion. It's but just this how is the, this is the color, yep. the color fade um, in and out. Michelle, there's on the rack there, there's on the far, almost far right, there's a, a the last cheaper wrap is in this color combination. Oh my gosh. So for instance, this piece is woven in a similar color combination to what I have on the loom. It actually has a little less black than the one I'm weaving today. But you can see how the colors I do. ebb uh -huh. and flow rather than having hard lines have sort of color gradations, which is something that most of my work does. Absolutely wonderful. I was watching upstairs. Uh -huh. This is a little hard to see. Do you want to point that light? That? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that that's better than seeing me? No. no. <laughs> no I, <laughs> Good. I thank you for that. Yeah. I yeah give, give, give us the um, other side of the camera tips. <laughs> like that. So. So basically, what's on the loom now is a warp like this, which is thirty-six feet long, combined with another hundred and eighty-eight threads. And then woven back and forth to create the fabric okay. step by step. The finished fabrics wove uh, round on in the front beam, but in the back is the rest of the yarn that hasn't been woven yet. So as I weave, I have a pedal that will release the tension and allow me to crank the yarn forward. Oh, and gotcha. that's how I can okay. do a, you know long amounts rather than just from edge to edge. Sure. Sure. So, um, so you're not actually weaving like a piece. You're weaving the fabric to make the piece from. Yes, Am I saying that the piece correctly? Will not be finished when it comes off the limb, unless it's a, I guess for example, a shawl is a you know a rectangle. Sure. But then I would still do some finish, finish work to mm -hmm. finish the fringes and stuff like that. Um, a piece like Michelle's wearing is two pieces of fabric with fringes on the end, and then a seam on the shoulders to give it sort of that poncho look. And the one that she was holding up was a, a single piece of fabric folded and finished. Um, Which gives you that angular. Mm -hmm. And that, that style can be worn different ways. Um, I think there's some pictures on the, that we'll see at some point in the slideshow of how you put one of these on and you can wear it with the fringe on the side. Or you can put the fringe in the back, or you can pull a bunch of stuff to the front and wear like a scarf. Um, so it's a real versatile. Matt, this if you is, don't, this, uh, this one is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Michelle was just sharing that, this, that that was probably one of her best sellers. Matt, if you don't mind, you can bring one of the, the, the slides up on the uh, first ones with the wearables. <clears throat> and we, we'll have both cameras going at the same time. So you can see the slide and you talking at the same time. I saw you did that with uh, uh, Nola's interview. Yeah. I so, so um, when I make Shamai and I'm <clears throat> trying to explain to people how what her process is and how this is done, I have had people's jaw drop and go, okay, so she's not just making the garment, she's making the fabric <laughs> and then creating the garment. Yes, she is. He's making it from scratch. From, I, from the beginning. The, the, the real bottom line is we're starting with 
with this, I may use um, some solid color like this or this. But once this is dyed, it looks like that. And then it mixes in with those. <laughs> and then we create the fabric. And then I have two sergers and two sewing machines that I use to, to put the fabric together to make anything from like the poncho she's wearing to this is a swing coat. So it's got the full sleeves and pockets and a nice flare. So it's very garment like. Mm -hmm. But I like the simple um, designs because there's less waste. Right. I, I hate throwing hand woven fabric away uh, or hand dyed yarn away. And I hate putting anything in the landfill. And I love the drape of things. So I go for the designs that have that kind of a drape and have as little um, excess waste as possible. And when it comes to waste, these uh, scarves that my husband just pointed out, <laughs> those are actually woven from leftover scraps of hand dyed yarn. Um, I end up at the end of the loom with pieces that are anywhere 12 to 16 inches long. And so these boxes here have batches of those yarns in them <laughs> and they overlap but a lot. I, I love the nubbity mm -hmm. look. That, that and that's because there's so much overlapping. Right. Of I the love yarns. that. So this is another attempt at not wasting anything and keeping things Well, good for you. I love that. Makes and me happy so too. when she trims from the loom, um, we have uh, in the shop Christmas ornaments that, that she makes oh. because she doesn't like to throw away any of the scraps because they're so pretty. And people are always fascinated That's by right. these, even That's before so they know that that it's <clears throat> fabric from, from Vicky's <laughs> from studio. Yeah. How sweet. Yeah. How sweet! I love that. I think I think when someone purchases one of her garments for a gift, they always say, "Okay, now you need a little ornament to go with it." Yeah. You do, and you do. So, <laughs> excuse me. I'm going to ask you another question. Was so? How much has your process changed since you started weaving throughout the That's years? That's a good question. That's a real good question because um, when you come when it comes to actually making a living. As an artist, nope. you can't do everything. And so you I. Can't. <laughs> well, I. Michelle? I we cannot. Can, can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, do you want to be an abstract expressionist or do you want to be a, a surrealist? Or, I mean, you know, at some point, things start to suit you better and, and you find a groove that you like. You don't want it to be a rut, but you want it to be a good groove. And I liked the dye work that I learned in college. Um, and I've been doing that ever since, but it's evolved. Um, I didn't, I wasn't really doing clothing for a long time. I did traditional weaving and coverlet type things and the lacy things, but this, a lot of color and a lot of drape suits me. And I'm a Southern girl, so I weave for the South, things that we can wear in air conditioning in the summer, layer it in the winter and take care of it easy. So those are kind of my, Very thoughtful. you know, that's how this <laughs> line of work evolved. Um, the other thing I do on the loom, though, and if we want to move, I, I'll talk all day. Keep about going. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah. About yeah, everything. Um, Matt, you may want to move to the next photo. Uh, yeah, you want to show that the other clothing, because um, that's most of what I do with the loom. Um, but there is one other project that I take on now and then where I take a, a small loom to the schools and we do a, a community project yeah. and that's pretty fun too and it's very different from the solitude of the studio and the personal um garment type uh whatever that is <laughs> that i love yeah. uh but it engages um with the students and i'm missing it right now because of covid um i was scheduled to do a work with the school last fall which we put off to this fall which now has been postponed again and it makes me remember that we were going to mention the fact that we're all standing here with masks nearby um we, we discussed masking in for tonight and we've kept the doors open the windows open today and we're trying to keep a distance so we're trying to be very mindful um, of that's the situation true. that's going on now even though we're not all 
wearing a mask the whole time we're on camera. So. But thank you for mentioning that very much. And yeah, before we leave this room, I'm kind of oh, hoping yeah. that Elaine can get um, shots that. of your framed pieces because yeah. um, I feel you, like, you know, out? she's Yeah, a, you're going to have to reach, Glenn. She's a painter, too. I mean, um, she weaves these beautiful landscape pieces. And they're done with the same dye process that my garments are done, but with much more of an eye toward the imagery. And the dye process sort of lends itself toward an uh, impressionist look, which is very landscape-like. Um, so sometimes I take enough time to just do one particular image, and uh, they're extremely time-consuming. But um, th this one over here is a favorite. <laughs> I've, I've refused to sell. Good for you. <laughs> It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, wow. And it's called uh, With the Flow. It's from a, a photograph of a brackish water lake feeding out to the Gulf of Mexico on the panhandle near uh, Great Beach. So the landscapes all have, you know, personal location and stories that go with them. And that's, a, it has to be a different process. Too. Well, that one, yes. Mm -hmm. Technically, that one is what, it's a multi- multi what do you call that where it's more than one it's not just yarn mixed media mixed media yeah because the wooden st strips are actually woven into the structure of the fabric they're not added later or you know whatever they are part integral part of the fabric and then that next slide keep going yeah there's one up here that's kind of a, a oh, sorry. Favorite. i'm sorry you might not be able to see it very well through there but that's a Another hand dyed where the, oh, I never even, the, the images are I get over painted closer. on the wharf and the west and then woven together to create. Hang with me, folks. We're going to walk on through here. Here we go. Thank you. Got to see it. Amazing. Amazing. Beautiful. Look at all this beautiful yarn. There's there's a piece over here, Glenn, that I'm wanting you to um, sure focus on so that we can well, start talking about her word weaving. Can I just show you the community weaving real quick because that's the next picture. I think so, out. Matt. Can you go to the community weaving slide? Part two. Keep going. Yes, we start there. Uh huh. Come back one. There you go. So this is talking about community weaving. So let's talk about that. Just briefly, because it's it's also done on the loom, but I'll take a loom to a school and we'll have the, the students and faculty uh, bring in fabric that's meaningful to them and we cut it into strips. And then those strips are woven into one large um, piece. I'm showing a piece that's at the school and now. So if you're showing the one at the school, you'll see, I think that one was about 23 feet long. Um, it, it involved, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, um, and so it, it's just a, another thing about weaving that's so meaningful is that you can put parts of yourself in it. You know, if you can't take them out once they're in there, they're a part of the structure of the fabric. And we even had some of the people uh, in those write messages or prayers or thoughts or uh, concerns on their fabric before they wove it in. And then it gets mushed together. Nobody knows it's there except the weaver, unless the weaver chooses to share it. So it gives food for a lot of layers of discussion about not just weaving and art, but also community and the things that we can pull Matt, together. Matt, mm. go to the next slide. I'm sorry. We'll go back that one. Yeah, I think they're absolutely stunning. Yeah, there's one. Thank you. They're just stunning. I, I I love the concept behind community and the words and the bringing it all together. It's so soulful. I just love everybody all about that. Well, and and as a segue, the the, the big one at, at Glendale actually has a section underneath it that uses the words, and that was the other part of my crazy brain that instead of being functional and nice and soft and flowy gets into the more philosophical um, and art, arty side of weaving. And that's with the words 
where words get woven together. And so in that community weaving, the words that the students use to describe why their fabric was special were printed onto strips of paper and then woven together hmm. into blocks. And the blocks are underneath the fabric weave. And so those blocks are sort of the basis for the other part of what we were going to talk about tonight Okay. in terms of what I call my word weaving. Well, let's transition. Let's go. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so as you're going, we're going to transition now from the weaving art uh, of fabric and cloth into uh, Vicky's mm -hmm. in beautiful, incredible woven word art, uh, which is I've never seen anything like it before in my life, and it's absolutely beautiful. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, as I scan across this beautiful Michelle Lambert. Pottery piece. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and and yeah, I bet you mine. Yes. They're beautiful. Okay, let's talk about this. Um, the word weaving started years ago when I was I'm a member of Southern Highland Craft Guild. Okay. As well as Tennessee Craft, uh, Piedmont Craftsman, and the American Craft Council. So all of those organizations uh, have been really important to me. Um, and they have all had some kind of art fair. That I've participated in, but Southern Highlands also has a facility that has specific exhibits from time to time. And they did one called In Black and White back in, I think it was 1990. And so I wove a black shawl and I wove a white shawl and I thought, okay, you know, that's cool. But black and white kept turning mm -hmm. around in my head. And I, I'm of the age where I grew up with newspapers. And black and white was the printed word. It was the we word, read man. Books, we read newspapers. So I went and for some crazy reason, cut up a Saturday newspaper. I would like to. This um, is the first word. We read the word ambitious rather than crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this was my first word weaving. And I cut up a Saturday newspaper. <laughs> Uh, headlines and put them in a paper. And I wove them back together in pie pans. <laughs> and okay, I maybe they are crazy. <laughs> a little crazy, a little Why? genius. How's that? Yes, yes. And I genius. sent it off to the exhibit and it had a lot of conversation. It was really fun, but it came back with the last word torn off. The last word was important because it says no more nukes or everything's gone nuke. Mm -hmm. And so the light bulb went off to me is it's got to be sturdier than the actual newspaper. So from then on, I have photocopied onto index weight paper and then cut into strips and rewoven and do you different laminate? ideas. I tried laminating for a while. I've got pieces that are laminated, but lamination can break down mm -hmm. um, when you cut into the strips. The, when you cut into the strips where you cut, the oh, lamination yeah. doesn't always hold, and so it begins to peel off. So now, then I did some that I didn't do anything to, and they've held up really well. But then I discovered Mod Podge, which is kind of a gluey surface that helps preserve. And so that's what I've been doing lately to just add that one more layer to make it, because it's paper, you know, and Matt, I'm not framing it, slide. and I don't want it behind glass because it takes away from the intimacy of, or the immediacy, you know, of what, what you're of the tactfulness of it so sure absolutely those are the um that was the basis so that was the first one um you've got some pictures of some other word weavings um and then the most recent one is called was based on well i'm babbling here i really got into the newspaper end of it I've done some other things with spiritual texts, which is what the one on the wall was with the heart in it. I've used um, words that I love and translated them into different languages and woven them together. Uh, but the newspapers keep recurring uh, because they keep coming. And, they keep, <laughs> and life keeps happening. And life keeps happening. And there's something sort of magical about taking a period of time and dissecting it and putting it back together. And I always try to stay out of the way um, wow. and just see what emerges. So a lot of the ones that you have some slides of are done from newspapers. Um, 
One of them was done from the alphabet where I took A through Z and took power. It's called power blocks. And I took the alphabet and each word has a definition. And those are just woven into their little blocks and then put together. Okay. So separately, you know, you might have laugh here and the mirror in the middle. So you laugh at yourself. Oh. Um, and this one isn't a definition. This is laugh in, I think it's 24 languages. <laughs> <laughs> I this wish you weren't just so darn clever. Ever coming here because I knew things, and I'm listening to you. <laughs> I don't know that you can take <laughs> that you can take back and share with others. I don't know. So that, this one was an early one. It just says "I love you" and back when we first got computers and you could do different fonts. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so I was like, okay, I love you in all these different fonts, and then cut them up and put them back together. I have and one in so, red. Do you? Yes. Yeah, so I have a lot of the hearts. The hearts were good. And, you know, then weave it in the shape of a heart, of course, because it it's just another layer of um, Amore. Yeah. <laughs> Amore. So. Cool. So um, let's talk about Life Interrupted 2020. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on with this piece, I feel like, that needs to be discussed. Yeah. Um, show me that. Trying to think I have the, Yeah, do you want to see yeah. it? Or, I, I mean, I've see got the bit. Yeah, it, it's upstairs. We're going um, over. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, just bear with us. Walk with us. Yeah, but you the, can keep that camera going because there's plenty to uh, show along the way. Right there. This was a newspaper week. Hey, this live programming <laughs> in Kingston Springs. That's what we do. So this was 2020 um, from one perspective. This is the newspaper, the Tennessean headline from every week from a uh, the beginning of the of 2020 to the end and there's I don't know <laughs> it's hard for me to even talk about it it was pretty overwhelming um there's a lot more detail in this one than there was in the one in the hallway because there just was and I didn't even put the dates at each square because everything just sort of ran together um, if you look close, eventually you'll find where the month changed somewhere in somewhere. Like there's May. Okay, May started there. It didn't start at the beginning of that. It started right there. And then on down the line, June shows up. But it's much less wow. obvious what the weeks were. And with this project, I kept remembering that um, 
folklore story. Actually, I believe it's a, a Native American Indian uh, story about the woman who was weaving the most beautiful fabric she'd ever woven and it became destroyed and she had to like pick up a thread and reweave and to me I keep thinking about the 2020 being such a year of chaos and Vicky distilled it down to its essence and just was weaving it back together word by word yeah and it's like okay here, here's the most important part, you know, that how in the world can we disrupt 2020? But I feel like you just still look it back together and put it in front of us in a way that that we can tie this. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. And, and hopefully so. In one place. Yeah. In, in one place. Yeah. It, it's that synthesis. So that I have to ask, when did you know that 2020 was going to be one of those years? Well, I was always, for some reason, I have been on this election year sort of cycle. So I had 2016 saved. Okay. Just the summer of 2016. Well, and, and I personally, 20, that was a very difficult year to process. Couldn't deal with them. So I set them aside. I didn't get rid of them, but I kept them. And so I'm thinking, oh, okay, every year I'm thinking, I need to do this 2016, 2016, 2016. And I never got to it. Well, 2020 came up and I thought, well, I better save them again because, you know, it's been four years and eventually I'll do 2016, which is in process downstairs, but it's still not finished. Um, but I was saving the 2020s. And March, the first week of March, when all We're back on. Sorry, folks. That was totally my fault. <laughs> that wasn't technology or nothing. That was just plain old Glenn Biggs doesn't know how to work. So technology. <laughs> <laughs> I do that from time to time. I'm not going to press any more buttons tonight. I promise. But, you know, when I look at this, of course, there are a lot of tiny words, but my eye goes to finding empathy and time to heal, mm -hmm. evacuate. Now, you know, just the the things that none of us will ever forget. Well, and the closer you get, the the more you can see. And that's what's interesting to me when I do these pieces is to watch people get drawn into them and what they do spend time looking at. And this piece is fixing to go to the State Museum for the residency craft. And so I, I haven't been able to do that, but I've Um, it's how little 
it's mostly words and stories than it is anything else. And I didn't realize that until after the fact, because in some of the other ones, I've used bigger images from the paper. But there were just so many words, and there was so much content, and there were so few. I mean, the pictures that are there, the nurse, you know, with the mask. Um, there is a George, you know, if, if you get close enough, there are a few. But even those images couldn't get lost. That, that they can get lost in a year like that. And I don't know how other people have processed 2020. Um, I'm still not sure I have because what did happen that year? <laughs> And you know, where did it go? I, I feel like that is so indicative of the way the world there was. Every time we turn on the news, we're just being bombarded with these words that we needed to process. It's so difficult. And I think it makes the bottom image mm -hmm. with the nurse and the mask mm -hmm. with the tears more powerful. All these words, 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 and it's mm -hmm. just. And I, I'm embarrassed that I can't tell you the photographer's name of that, but it is there. It does have uh, photography credit, the, the person who took that actual. To the Tennessean, because all of this came from the newspaper. Um, so those headlines in that next to the last block are from the whole year, but relate to the Tennessee and as a newspaper. And uh, there's another little story about 10 years before 2020, we had 2010 and we had the flood. And I did a, um, a weaving of the month of May in 2010. And that one was predicated because it, it started on May 1st and didn't get to for a week. We were flooded out. Our, our house was okay, but we couldn't get here. But within a week, the Tennessean had delivered all of my back newspapers. And at that point, I knew I had to do that month. <laughs> so I did the whole month of May. Wow. All, and and the, the, the things emerge, obviously. Um, and the State Museum actually has that piece in their collection, their permanent collection. Okay. Cool. So this one's going to the Tennessee State Museum when? It goes, um, the exhibit opens October 29th. And it will be open to the public, free admission, all the way through February 20th of 2022. Okay. And this is part of the biennial? It's called it's Biennial uh, Best of Tennessee Craft. It's put on by Tennessee Craft, who does the art fairs in the Centennial Park. Which is a year. this weekend? Uh, no. The, uh, the next one is the second weekend of October. I don't know the okay. exact dates, but it's coming up. Uh, and unfortunately, I won't be there because it's gotten harder and harder for me to set up a tent and sit in a park for three days and deal with all that stuff so i'm uh it's, it's hard to let that go but uh I'm, i'll be there as a volunteer this year there you go and there you I'll go you're there as an art fair at shemai all year long so there, yes there very true every day, <laughs> every day. Year round art fair. It is that. It's a beautiful place. Uh, what about this piece that's right here in front of us? This is uh, This one was laminated. And you can see the issues I um, This is called Vision of Faith, and it relates to the little one that was downstairs, that center circle there um, that represents the earth, is from seven spiritual texts. Um, and I'm not to list them all on this one, but it's Christian. Hebrew, Taoist, Buddhist, Hindu, Native American. Judaism. That was that was Hebrew. Oh. Um, Uh, 
set apart, sewn together. Laugh still has the mirror in the middle, so you can remember to laugh at yourself. And then with down organic color cottons and the organizations in the middle at one time were naturally dyed cotton rainbow colors, but natural dyes are really hard to get permanent on cotton. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the color there they have receded into it's it's a, it's a favorite for sure. It is. It is. And I, ha I have a small version of the vision, the center part that I call Vision of Faith that Shammai has carried some. I don't know if they have any now. I need to make some more, but it's just a a, a smaller version and about, a, what are they, six, five-inch squares or something like that, six-inch six squares. Got to make some more. <laughs> 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 but I love the fact that they do say the same thing. I mean, you know, if, you, if we put our hearts into to what's really important so much of the time and we're speaking a different language, Really are saying the same thing. Sure. Matt, if you'll bring the 2020 uh, slide show back up, there's some slides that shows Vicki working on the piece. I want to make sure the audience sees. Um, Let's see. Yep. So, this is a, a picture of you standing at your table working, putting yeah. it all together. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what, a, what a mess that this oh, lady's making it this. is to stay out of the way and things were just it was just so much. But three things did emerge, three basic ones, this COVID of course. Um there was the election and there was social unrest. Um, and then throughout it, there was climate change because we, we started the year in Nashville with another tornado in early March. March. So, um, 2020 yeah. was a year, wasn't it? Good heavens. Uh, <laughs> yeah, th there was a time where I thought, really, what I should do when this is over is just burn it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, what do you want to remember? What do you want to forget? Yeah, and right. this, this was this is one version of what it was. Yeah. Everybody uh, everybody's was different. Next slide. Um, and this, these are pictures of you putting it together on the bed here. Yeah. Laying it all out. I don't have enough room on my table. So I need <laughs> and she me put the frame together <laughs> next to my hands. It was so good. Go to the next one, please. Yeah. It just got bigger. <laughs> it just bigger. Bigger and then there's a thing on the wall. Yeah. And I didn't force myself to do it this small because there was a point I wanted each of those squares to be bigger and more life size. I actually did. What stopped you? Reality. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is a sense of reality that, you know, where are you going to put it? How, how are you physically going to mm -hmm. deal with it? How are um, you going to transport it? <laughs> right. I think you did good. Okay, the next one. I think this is where we go into other words, other word we Okay, and those, yeah. maybe so. And yeah. Those are some of the others that were. Go ahead. Newspaper or different text. Yeah. Next slide. So I think this is the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna flip the camera around, folks. Just so. Yeah. Yes, that's the flood. Okay. So that one started May first, and it's every day of May uh, throughout Nashville's recovery in the Tennessee. God bless them. They kept putting the paper out. And they got it. <laughs> they were helping process. All that's the right. Every process. <laughs> Next, Matt. There we go. And this is the bottom. Here in class. 
Mm-hmm. Color yeah, is where I had seen her clothes, and I just kept thinking, Well, I want one of those, I want to wear one of those, and seeing her. You. And then I find out she does all these other incredible things that it, she just she blows me away. And I'm listening to you tonight, going, Do you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe you're right, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you make me feel really lazy. No, no, you're not lazy. No, that's right? not certainly by not, but by, by a long shot. Uh, Matt, go to the next one. Sometimes you just do stuff though. You know, you burn. I think, you know, it, it's remember Sylvia Hyman? Oh, yeah, fabulous ceramicist. Um, she was in her 90s, I think, when uh, she was asked if she was ever going to retire, and she said yes. Uh, someday when I run out of ideas, I have a lot of ideas. She had this beautiful pause and then said, but I have a lot of ideas. <laughs> and that's kind of how I am. I'll quit one of these days, you know, when I run out of things that I need to do. And even yes. making clothing, I have need to do that still. It just needs something. Mm -hmm. it. It's still magic to watch the fabric appear in front of me and know that it wasn't that it was this comb of yarn or this tangle of knots or whatever at one time and really no matter where i go if i'm wearing one of your pieces people know that that just that didn't come from a store it's like where did you get that and it was handmade yeah i can tell you know people mm -hmm. people stop you and talk to you mm -hmm. you can tell the difference I come from a long line of weavers. It's been for <laughs> centuries. So the next one we're looking at is back at the uh, a month of Sundays mm -hmm. piece. Uh, Matt, you want to go to the next one? And then the one with the red block frames. Oh, okay. That one. I, that was my attempt to put it on fa fabric instead of a hard frame. And so I did some sort of quilt-like framing around the the individual blocks. Um, and that was kind of fun, but. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was something different. Yeah. I did, you know, you don't want, I, I didn't ever go into this thinking I'm going to do this every four years for the rest of my life or every year or, or you know, they, that there needed to be this continuity. So I felt in the early days a, a need to make them different enough from time to time. And, and now it's sort of just taking care of itself because they're all going to be different. Yeah, they can't be the same. Truly, truly. Matt, the next one, please. I think we're about to get, and then we got to this one. Okay. And then next. Oh, um, I'm going to Is that the power blocks? Yeah. Yeah. That's a favorite of mine because it starts, it, it goes to the alphabet. And I chose what I believe to be significant words, A through Z. And this was early days of the computer again. Webster Dictionary was on the computer. <laughs> so I could go in there and just like, okay. Did you, know? you use multiple fonts? No. Oh, yeah. I didn't use multiple <laughs> fonts. I'd already done that. <laughs> I used multiple definitions and uh, different colors and a few different shapes. And uh, so it just, but they're all significant words. And I have reproduced some of those just as individual blocks because the words were meaningful yeah. yeah so fantastic uh is that the last one matt i think so that was it so that's the end of our slides so anything else you'd like to share with the audience this evening about with all your most wonderful incredible outstanding like beautiful <laughs> artwork um show your your shawl that you have oh. on this evening your vest no, that you I have on this evening yeah, as well because it's I wear this one a lot. so beautiful. I, just, I like the colors and I like the shape, and it's easy on and off. And I love, I'm like you. I like the way these pieces drape on on the human form. They're just so beautiful. When you're working with hand wovens, um, you have to deal with 
certain technical issues. And one way that <clears throat> some people solve the problem is that they use them to interfacing and make them really stiff. And I mm. never wanted to go in that direction. I always wanted to be able to have something that kind of flowed and was soft. So, Well, success. Yeah, they're all gorgeous. Well, folks, I want to uh, thank you all for joining us this evening. I can't believe it's been an hour. That flew by like in 15 minutes. It was amazing. Um, I want to especially thank our special guest with us this evening, Vicki uh, Wipperman, and uh, thank her for, for allowing us into her space, uh, her very personal space and studios into showing us uh, all of her beautiful art, her heart and her soul and what she does all day long every day for a long time. And can I thank one more group? Um, yes, the absolutely. The Guild of Nashville has been incredibly supportive, both personally and <laughs> uh, professionally, throughout the decades. And when I came to Nashville, I wasn't weaving full time, but I got hooked up through friends, and uh, that's just been a, a great organization. So if anybody has an interest in weaving in, in any way, uh, shape, or form, it's a great. Uh, resource as well as this community arts of Bellevue. We love so, it, man. Uh, uh, proud member now. Thank you. We appreciate <laughs> that very much. So, also with us this evening, uh, Elaine Aldis, uh, right. who also kind of was really the the pusher, one of the pushers for this show this evening. So, I really appreciate. It. And Elaine is also on the board of directors for Community Arts of Bellevue, and so I also so appreciate all the work. And she was the first half cameraman tonight. So. She she earned her ride to to Kingston Springs with us and her pizza and her pizza as well. So as a closeout, I'm going to ask the three of you to get together. But we're going to be socially distancing. We're going to be socially distancing oh, aware. As we just wave goodbye to everybody, and y'all have a great evening. Thank stay you for safe. joining us and stay safe. Good night.